the the idea of identifying patterns of payments is the first step in being able to use any of these compound interest sort of um, factors or compound interest formulas or, or, or anything. And, and, and really, we've got a couple of very simple uh, patterns. We'll always reference time t equal to zero, meaning that's, that's now. And payments that occur now are always referred to as P's. And I'll just put one on here. Let's just say, for instance, this is a P. And then we'll have a cash flow diagram that goes for some number of payments in num number of periods into the future. And, and then we might have an F. Um, this sort of pattern doesn't matter if the P is down and the F is up, or it could be that the P is up and the F is up doesn't matter. It's really just about interpreting the problem correctly. And anytime that we're moving between a P and an F, all we need to do is make sure that the P is at the beginning of, of the time, time cash flow diagram and the F is at the end. And then that we identify the N where the N starts with, with now is zero. And then we number them like this. And these aren't necessarily years. You know, they, they could be months, they could be any type. And I said very carefully that these are time periods. Okay, so they're time periods. And so P's, N's, F's, and the important thing is the I, which, which is going to be, you know, what's the interest rate? And this general cash flow diagram gives us everything we need to know about moving money from the present to the future or from the future back to the present. No problem. And we've got the equation to do that. And you kind of say, okay, Mike, this is pretty easy stuff. Why are you going on? Because what we'll see in this chapter is that there's other patterns that we have to identify. There's one for something we call an annuity. And an annuity pattern has equal payments that occur each period. Right, so for this one, we'd have one, two, three, four, five, six. So here n is equal to six. And the pattern for an annuity, which believe it or not, we call A, right? Very inventive. Um, A, A for annuity. And you'll see me use that word uh, when I go back to the slides. But the most important thing about an annuity is that the first, the first payment of the annuity occurs at time t equal to one, and the last one occurs at time at the last time period. Now, if I want to relate an annuity to a P or an F, the P still stays here, and the F goes here. The F occurs at the same time period as the last payment. So when you're reading an engineering economics problem, it's important to identify, okay, when does that first payment happen? And if the first payment happens here, it's not part of the, it's not part of the annuity. It's just a dollar amount that you have to add in a loan later on. Okay, so that's one pattern. Um, there's other more complicated patterns. And this is kind of why I've broken this out, let's say into its own board, but we'll have, we'll have other patterns that's that look like this. This is a this is kind of a tricky one, where this is time t equal to zero. This is time one, two, three, four, five, six. This is what we call an arithmetic gradient. And the important thing to realize with a gradient is that it's a constantly increasing annuity, but the first payment starts at time t equal to two. Okay, and the way and the reason for that is that if you you know extend this line down, the first payment of an annuity starts here, but it actually starts out as a zero G, and then the first is a one G, then a two G, three G, uh, et cetera. Okay, so so again, it's all about identifying these patterns. There's another one that is a, a, a geometric gradient, and that's but that's more complicated. That has its own 
sort of pattern that I'll get to uh, in a minute. Now, I'm sorry, I, I actually was hiding the, um, the chat. Um, someone has asked, would those phone payment plans be similar to an annuity? Sure, any, absolutely anything that has a constant payment is an annuity. Your, your car payments, your mortgage, right? Any kind of payments on any kind of loan, if the payment amount is the same every month, then we call that an annuity and we, we give it a value of A. Anything that happens at time to equal zero, we call a P. Anything that happens at the end, we call an F. Now, when we talk about assets, uh, sometimes uh, an F is also equal to an S, right? So remember we use salvage value or scrap value. Well, if you see a salvage or a scrap value or see an S, sometimes we use that as an F. But, but if you think ahead for a second to, to how you might apply these patterns, if you were to, let's say, save a certain amount of money every month for the next 20 years, and you say, well, how much money do I have at the end? Well, you'll be able to use the compound interest factor that we learned tonight to be able to calculate that. Um, okay, so, so, um, so cash flows and cash flow diagrams are all about recognizing the patterns that apply to the various formulas that we use. And what, we'll re what you'll realize is that the, the tables, the tables that appear in your engineering economics textbook, right? So at the back of the textbook, you've got these pretty boring pages that are essentially just pages filled with numbers. Well, those pages filled with numbers are for uh, particularly popular interest rates. You know, so there's a, there's a quarter inch, a, a quarter inch, quarter, quarter percent, a half percent, a three quarter percent, a one percent, a two percent, a four percent. Well, I think there's a three percent. You know, there, there might be a twenty percent and then a thirty percent. Um, so the tables you can use the tables when you have some nice round number uh, of for the interest rate. If you don't have a nice round number for the interest rate, then you have to use the formula. But for this audience, that's probably not so bad. Uh, the formulas might be a bit more daunting for for business students. Okay, so, um, but anyway, uh, that's, that's, I, I know I kind of deviated a little bit from the slides, but really this chapter is all about identifying patterns of payments. And if you have to, uh, you know, come back and, and, and watch this little segment again uh, for a refresher, let's say, on some of these patterns. And, and I do review the patterns even in the, the, in the slides too. So, so uh, uh, they don't, disappear entirely. I just wanted to sort of, let's say, highlight them uh, um, because they're really pretty, pretty important.